Welcome to AIA San Diego's 2022 Career Connect. The Career Expo is a collaborative event hosted by San Diego's leading post-secondary design education institutions and local professional organizations active in key design and development sectors. This year, we feature events geared at providing connection, coaching, and consulting for the next generation of professionals in our field. Our first panel features a special keynote speech from Jorge Gracia, a Mexican architect, founder of Escuela Libre de Arquitectura, and principal of international award-winning practice Gracia Studio. He will share a bit about his practice, architecture school, and how both impact the San Diego Baja region. He also shares where his passion of architecture comes from and advice for anyone wanting to pursue the profession. Join us for our meet and greet panel featuring key representatives of SoCal universities and colleges who will outline the application process, programs, and share thoughts on campus life. The interview workshop will feature local architectural firm leadership, offering insights on tools and tricks for nailing your interview. Let these experienced designers walk you through what it takes to make a great impression and highlight your skills and personality. Our Multiple Avenues of Architecture workshop will feature a diverse set of panelists highlighting the many different avenues available to pursue in the profession. This year, tune in to hear about laboratory planning, construction management, the technical side of project architecture, as well as specialization in historic preservation, civic, mixed use, and commercial prototypes. Finally, be sure to join our final day of the fair by signing up for our Turbo Networking session. This session gives you the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with local architecture, design, and construction employers. Each firm will have their own breakout room, plus private appointments where you can share more about yourself. Thanks for joining us at this year's Career Connect. Hello, and thanks for joining us today for the annual AIA San Diego Career Expo. I'm Lee Eisen, CEO of AIA San Diego, a chapter of the American Institute of Architects. Founded back in 1928, our organization represents more than 1,000 design professionals throughout the San Diego County region. We pride ourselves on professional excellence, integrity, stewardship, community service, and lifelong learning. It is those values that make these three little letters, AIA, so significant. There's so much we can accomplish together. I hope you will consider joining AIA or AIAS and tap into the power of the AIA community to build a better future together. To kick off this year's career fair, we are pleased to announce keynote speaker Jorge Garcia, founder and director of Escuela Libre de Arquitectura in Baja California and principal of renowned international award-winning firm Garcia Studio. Jorge's firm has won several national and international awards, including Design Vanguard 2012 from Architectural Record and Emerging Voices 2013 from Architectural League of New York. We are pleased to have him present today about his vision for designing in our unique cross-border region of San Diego, Tijuana, and share his advice for emerging professionals entering the field. Hola, soy Jorge Gracia. Hello, good morning. This is Jorge Gracia, an architect uh, based in Tijuana, Mexico, um, founder of Gracia Studio and Escuela Libre de Arquitectura. Thanks uh, to the Career Fair, from, to the AIA San Diego Career Fair uh, 2022 for allowing me to, to give uh, some words about our, what we do as an architecture studio and an architecture school based in Tijuana. Uh, I would like to start by talking a little bit of, about the background, even though San Diego, it's uh, our neighbor here, uh, but it's, I think it's very important to contextualize uh, the, the, the location where we're located, where we are before we talk about architecture. Uh, we're so close together, but so different apart. So I think it's very important as, a, as an architect to understand both sides of the border, to be able to propose buildings that respond to the social impacts that, that architecture and design can have in the built environment. I would like to share my screen. Uh, 
first. <laughs> okay, so great. So, so I'll talk about the factors first. Uh, the background uh, about the city, a little bit about the city, uh, born town, born, born, born town, about 103 years old, uh, compared to other border towns or, or cities, as uh, Ciudad Juarez, for example, with 362 years, New York, 397, Monterrey, or, or Mexico City, 500. So that puts us in a position where we can understand where we uh, where we're standing in regards to the progress that we have done in the 132 years that the city has been has been uh, established uh, the prohibition law has put an, a, a, a very impact uh, has impacted the city the casinos uh, in 1927 and the international tourism that we started getting at that at that time uh, this is a photo of the in the 1920s uh, 100 years uh, ago uh, about 102 and also the geographical location where we are uh, we're on the far north of our peninsula baja peninsula uh, and we have the us and mexico border so uh, so the linear uh, uh, form the, the form of, of our, our 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 peninsula it, it puts us in a position of being so far away from the from closer towns, but it, it puts us too close to, to the US. So that's where we get our, our influence. We got lots of people from nationally from 30 states, uh, immigrants, and internationally from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and the US. So it's a meeting point for all these people from different countries and from different states. Uh, we tend to be as close as we can to the US. The US tends to go as far as possible from, from Mexico, uh, and that's a condition. Uh, the timing, so uh, where you have more time in a city or in a, in a country, there are more rules. So in Tijuana, that's, that's one of the conditions, the, the rules. And there might be lots of rules, but there's not that much enforcement. So that puts us in a position that we can uh, create designs that, that they are more, more flexible in some point or more risky or more, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a typical, it's a, a typical history of, it's not the classical history of Mexico, uh, our town. Uh, we had lots of, uh, Transborder culture, uh, lots of binational input from from different places and from the U.S. mainly, and it's a meeting point for for immigration. Uh, there, there is a regional regional art expression very unique. Uh, from this photo from James Elliot for, for an artwork from Richard Liu in, in 1988, it's actually standing in, and, and this used to be the border just across the street from our airport in Tijuana. And that's one of the first uh, art expressions that, that we started to getting in the border uh, when there used to be just a, a barbed wire uh, fence and, 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 and a door, that's an artwork. And then the work of Carlo, uh, Marcos Ramirez R with the toy and horse in 1987. Also that faces both sides, the horses, uh, and it's in the middle of the, of, of uh, half of it, it's on the US and half of it, it's in Mexico. Or Luis Munoz, Hombre Bala, the cannonball man who crosses the, the, the border and the immigration is waiting for them back there. <laughs> or Ana Teresa Fernandez erasing the border in 2012. There are different, different arts. Uh, as an architect, we have designed a, a a project that is called Encuentro Guadalupe that it, it has a, a lot of impact on tourism in the area of Valle de Guadalupe. Uh, we have also also designed a culinary art school, which is it has it has had an educational impact uh, in the culinary scene of the of the of the city of Tijuana. So so I think through design uh, we can create uh, moments. We can create spaces that engage with other people, places 
uh, areas or, or spaces that can promote uh, uh, forward thinking for new generations. And that's where we stand out as a, a design studio. Uh, my background uh, is as an architect, uh, the study in Tijuana, but have had the opportunity of working in San Diego at the beginning of my career or with a Korean company in Tijuana, based in Tijuana, building factories first. So, so that, that uh, by national or international condition uh, as an architect has uh, pushed me to, to learn, not in a local way, but more in an international way and trying to position and learn from, from other places that I visit and implement that in a way in our city that I can promote uh, our city for the better well-being of our community and future generations. Uh, this is this is this, the culinary school that we designed here in Tijuana. Uh, and also also in uh, eight years ago in 2014, we designed a, a program for architecture here, uh, an architecture school. That, 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 that I decided to found in the sense because we I, I needed a, I noticed a lack of, of commitment through the concept of design that, that from the belief that design can change a city a city and and that's the reason why we uh, as a group founded its Escuela Libre, Arquitura, Escuela Libre Arquitura which is based in Tijuana uh, this is some photos of the, of the site visits. So I think through locals regeneration, uh, through architecture and design, we can we can uh, promote the generation of the social tejidos, uh, how do you say? The, uh, well, the connections between people. Uh, so we founded this school in the in, in Tijuana's red light district. So I believe that urban acupuncture it's a uh, it's very important in the cities like like ours because uh, a small seed in a in certain area can create an uh, an effect on on the surroundings uh, that it's inimaginable. So we are just in the in the middle, well, in the center where the historic district connects the red light district, which. In Tijuana, it's it's an area. It's the, the yellow one is the historic district, and the red is the red light district, and the blue dot it's the building where where we're located. The border is is is, is right here. So we're walking five minutes from the border, and it, that's an intention. And we're walking we're walking distance from most of the transport uh, hubs from the city. So we believe that in the city, there is a lack of transportation, but the one we have, we have to use it and we have to embrace it and receive it as a, as a, as a, a way of living. Uh, if we want to, to build a better, better city in the future, we, we have to start doing, uh, using the transportation, public transportation. So in this Escuela uh, Libre Arquitectura model, what we did, it's a, uh, uh, create this software and hardware, you know, the structure itself is the building, but not, not only the building itself where the, where the classes take place, it's mainly the city. And the software is the program, how we, uh, how we teach uh, architecture, mainly through practice uh, to site construction visits uh, once a week and, 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 and 30 weeks of practice in a, Either a construction company or design companies, national, international, uh, uh, local, national, and internationally. So this is uh, an example of, 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 of a visit uh, of a Wednesday on a on a school that we have to go practice all the uh, uh, the, the uh, at least one time do some type of work that it, that to be able to be connected more with the with the workforce. Uh, also, in our school, we, we think of the city as a, as a lab where we, we, we do projects, urban, urban planning projects uh, that can improve, improve our city. So as an architecture studio, we connect the school with the studio so that 
So the uh, since it's our architecture firm, it's a design design build firm. So we can take all the students every Wednesday to go and 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 practice uh, and learn from the workers who are doing performing the jobs and and the engineers and the architects. Uh, but on the site, which I think it's a way of learning that it, it, it it's it's hard to to not learn from that point. It's not the same to learn on a classroom how how a, a footing it's being built and then helping pouring the concrete or 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 bending some rebar to understand how how it is, and that also helps to understand the 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 workforce, the the people that do the craftsman recognition. So we believe in the in the workers and, and the architecture is also a craft. So we empower them, empower the workers uh, by, by at least telling them how important it is, it is their, their work uh, and how important our designs are, how, how important it is for our designs to be built by them. Because if, if they were not built, our designs won't, won't have a meeting. So, so this is some of the of the of the workers and and it is on the site visit that we go there, and this is some teachers that we build, uh, give to them and 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 it's something that is as is, it's not a big effort as a for a student or for an architect, but it's a big impact in their lives as workers, that they feel recognized about their work and they do it with more, uh, pleasure and, and feel more part of the of the of the the building of, of, of what they do also it's very important to have the social uh, historic awareness and where we are located this is this is in the same block of where our school is so they understand uh, also also how how are we uh, who are who is the people that are that is teaching in the school. Uh, we have to select people that are multidiscipline, multidisciplinary, like uh, from musicians, uh, urban planners, architects, uh, people that work on the selling uh, properties to understand re the reality of the practice of architecture. Um, on the on the practice, uh, on the software part, we have uh, the practice, which is. Uh, all the construction site learning, uh, the internships that I mentioned, the, the local one, the, the the national internship and international, all all of those three ten weeks each, the recognition of the arts, the crafts, the, of the construction labors, the awareness of the social historic sense of belonging, and the multidiscipline learning, uh, the architects uh, architect, architects in practice. So, so the hardware structure of, of, of it's, it's, a, it's a school, but it's, as I said, it's also the, the, the city, the, the, the shops from the carpenters, the shops from the electricians, uh, and to, under, to learn architecture to, to practice. So also at the same, same location, there are architecture studio that are embedded on the same school so that the students can, can practice on those architecture studios, such as Borisino or, or our studio itself, with, that we teach at the school and also and also can uh, provide with assistance to the to the to the students teacher residency for teachers that come from abroad that can stay at the school and the specialized workshops uh, during any program that that could be from building pedals for guitars or or even a, a electronic music or that sometimes it's not a specific architecture but gives you a sense of uh, it gives you an inspiration to do to, to do architecture. I think uh, when you do architecture, the least, when you're thinking of a new design, the least, the, the last place you should look is into architecture. You have to look into dance, into music, into other things that inspire you to, to, to do what you, what you think that it should be that new project. So these are examples of the, for students in different shops from, from ironwork, from carpentry, uh, or building models. Uh, it is on our roof. On some some points, we bring people to teach them how to do Adobe or or uh, lots of lots of, of craft. So that's the hardware, okay. And then uh, it needs to be a a, a proactive uh, approach to to be able to 
to what we learn implemented in the city. So, so in this case, for example, the students created a, a, a on an abandoned space a, a project to to convert that space into a, a place for lectures. It used to be a an old a bar that burned that, that it has a history and I think uh, when you live in cities that are not that old the history you have to create it uh, because the registry of historic buildings is not it's not it's the city is not that old so to be able to have enough buildings that are registered so but if if we start tearing apart those buildings they will never have a history so I think it's it's our, our job in, in as architects and as, as, as citizens to communicate the, the little history that we might have to be able to communicate to new generations and, 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 and at some point convert it into historic places that have, have a meeting for the, for the city. This is a place that, that is two blocks away from the school. The students found it and they decided to work with all the trash and, and the debris that were on the construction. Uh, this is the way it found. They found that they found it very, very interesting how the layers of the, there was three fires on that that particular site in the lapse of I don't know how many years, and they found that as a as a very inspiring place. And they they worked without electricity or water to be able to build with the trash that was there, uh, and no tools to build a, a, a pavilions for a, for that exposition. And with the trash, they built artwork with. A, uh, their teachers. Uh, one of them, uh, in this case, it was an artist, uh, said Sullivan, uh, who created this 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 work with them with the students, and and the students uh, they bring people from from uh, this was from Colombia or from Cambridge, uh, and also another thing that 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 is interesting of, of what I that I found interesting on the 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 way we approach architecture is that. The students, at some point, some of them, they, they, uh, they can work in projects uh, such such as this one that is in Guadalupe that it was built by a student by Sara uh, and and it's very uh, uh, rewarding for them uh, finishing out school and being able to perform uh, uh, living on site and building this from ground up in a lapse of a year and a half approximately. So, so I see that architecture has different uh, ways of uh, approaching uh, approach. There are, there are lots of things that you could do as an architect, uh, but I think the most inter interesting thing for me is that you can, that what you, whatever you do, it, it, you, can, you can have an impact, impact on a city. Uh, and that's what I like about about being being an architect in this region. That's why I talk about the the first the concept the the concept of the area where we live, how we perform. Uh, our studio is is based in the region. We we even though we're in Tijuana, uh, we have projects in in Palm Springs. We have projects in LA. We have projects in, in Hawaii, uh, in Baja, in Baja California, in Todos Santos, and. And, and the ability of, of work on both sides, I think it's, it's because I was born and raised in the border. I, even though I was born in Tijuana, all my life I have been able to cross. And there's lots of people that have that condition in, in the border. And we have to be able to, to, to uh, use it in a, to, I think it's leverage the way you say it. I don't know if that's the word. Uh, I think you, you have to use that in your favor, in your favor and try to use the best of both, of both countries. There are lots of aspects in regards to, in regards to uh, accreditation, for example, for the school in Mexico. In Mexico, it's accred accredited, uh, or, in, or in Mexico, we're licensed as architects. In the US, I understand uh, that, well, I, I, I know that we are not, but we always uh, do, do collaborations with other architects in the, in the US to be able to make this happen and to have this uh, connection with both countries, give, give uh, whatever we feel that we can give to, to the US when we work on those projects and always work with somebody local to be able to understand the le legal aspects of it and, and all the, the code issues that we have to uh, address to be able to 
to to build something in the in the United States. In the same way, when we have projects in Mexico, in Mexico, if there's uh, collaborations, we always uh, love that as a studio. I think it's very important. I think architecture is not a selfish career. It's something, even though there is lots of egos in between architects, I think it's very important to and very rewardful for, for everybody that do collaborations. So that's where we are right now. We're more into, into collaborating with other, with other architects and because that's where exciting is. The, the excitement is about the profession when, when you do something that you haven't done yet. So, so we are a firm that is, that is more into, uh, started as, a, as an architect. I started as an architect, but basically what, I was a builder first, at first of my career. And I started to fell in love about the profession during the construction processes of each of the constructions. Uh, what I noticed is that I started as a builder and when I was, I was, I was uh, glad or privileged that I was working with architects who were, that were doing interesting things uh, in architecture, such as Sebastián Mariscal, in, uh, that it was based in San Diego at that point. And that helped me understand that, that I loved uh, also architecture, because at the beginning I was more to, I loved the, the, the idea of, of seeing something being built from an idea to, to something being built. But, I, but maybe at that point I didn't, I wasn't in love about architecture. And, and it, was, it took me time uh, to go understanding what, what it was. And, and now I understand that, that, it, that, that it, you, could do, you could do a building, but if it doesn't have a soul, it's not architecture. So, so I see it as that, as the, ar ar the architecture is the soul of a building. So, but I, I also learned that, that being a builder is necessary to be able to, in my conditions, is necessary for me to be able to uh, do architecture. The way I have approached the profession is first learn to build and then I, I learn to design. This, this image that you see here, it's a project that we just finished. We haven't took new, new photos, but we did the construction. I feel very proud on, on the way it was performed. Uh, we poured more than 10,000, more than 1,000 cubic yards of, of concrete in a period of, a period of uh, like a year and a half. I was pouring like two or three times a week, waking up like 6.30, being at the site at, at seven till seven night all, every day. Only, only except Sundays, uh, for almost a year and a half, and 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 as I, even on the side, I was like pouring the concrete and everything, and I, and that's I think it's very important, and that's why I love about this profession. Even though at this point we are our studio is changing to doing more design than than construction, because you can only do certain constructions at a time. And we're right now growing a lot in regards to design. Lots of people are calling us to, to design homes or projects in different places. So we cannot do all the construction. So we are shifting our, our, our way of, of, of working in our studio to do that. But I think it's, it's not a problem because we already pay the price of, 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 of doing the construction. So now when we give the drawings to a builder, we know that it's being that it's easy that it, that we can build it, and if they don't know, we can tell them how to do it. So, so we the project. This is a project in, in Hawaii. Uh, uh, the, the the builder the to the owner it was an owner builder, and we just supervise everything through FaceTime. Uh, it was very very interesting because we know how to do it. So we just we just by FaceTime letting them know how how to do things. <laughs> so projects in Mexico City, or or in the one this one in Valle that we prefabricated in Mexicali, three hours away, and bring all the structures. Uh, this is the one we just finished. This is not finished, almost finished. It was we haven't taken new photos of it. And it's also another another. Thing. So that's basically it. Uh, uh, I think as a, as a professional, 
what I can give as an advice is 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 do some, do what you like, but it's but it doesn't mean that 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 you like right now is gonna be what you're gonna be liking all all your life. So I I will advise just to don't worry about anything. Just do what you love at this point, and the life will take you where you have to be. So so uh, my advice to to any student that would like to uh, enroll up into architecture, I will just say that that you have to do what you like at this time, at, at this point of life. It doesn't mean that you that you have to do that all your life. So, but I think architecture is a profession that has lots of different uh, roads and different uh, ways to that you can perform on it on the construction side on the design side on the on the um, there is lots of lots of different different places where you can uh, work on so but i think for myself i was more into construction first and then fell in love with, with architecture so that'll be my advice uh, do what you like at this point and and and, and you can uh, be guided to your guts and to what you think it's it's, but, I, but at the end, uh, do what you love and do always with passion uh, so that you don't have to go to work and you just do it as a, as a thing that you, that you love, basically. So... Introducing the 2022 Laura Shin Diversity in Architecture Scholarship. This year, the chapter was very impressed to see so many wonderful submissions. It was part of our strategic plan to further outreach to not only San Diego County, but also to Tijuana and Baja California. Thank you to all the students who submitted. We encourage you to continue on your journey in architecture. The committee had a tough decision ahead of them. The Laura Shin Diversity in Architecture Scholarship was established amidst 2020 to empower the next generation of architects and support pre-professionals that are underrepresented in our field. Laura was a member of our Women in Architecture Committee for years before joining our Executive Committee and becoming 2021 AIA San Diego President. She is an advocate for not only women in architecture, but also for diversity in our future pipeline. She leaves behind a strong legacy to continue the mission of the AIA through advocacy, outreach, and mentorship, which are reflected in this year's scholarship recipients. We will celebrate her memory by reading parts of our 2022 scholarship recipient essays now. When I was a little girl, before I knew the word architecture existed, I always had a passion for designing spaces. My dad introduced me to the possibility of being an architect by showing me stunning houses he would work on. As a child, witnessing the beautifully crafted homes was shocking and inspiring. My parents immigrated from Mexico and had to work hard to help my brothers and I find and pursue our passions, a privilege they never experienced. I want to become an architect because creating opportunities for people through architecture is amazing. Well-designed spaces and low-income housing do not have to be mutually exclusive. I have many people who have inspired me that I consider mentors. They respond to the needs of their community and those around them through their work, and I dream of doing the same. We are pleased to announce this year's winner of the 2022 Laura Shin Diversity in Architecture Scholarship is Samantha Marquez. Inspired by her family's ability to overcome challenges, the committee was impressed by Samantha's drive to pursue architecture. While completing her final year, she is actively engaged with multiple internships and student advocacy, already demonstrating attributes of a future citizen architect. The chapter is looking forward to seeing her progression in the field and contributions to our built environment. It is our hope that her story helps spark other young designers to explore the architectural field.